Lecture 5-1, Identification of Minerals. Now, minerals make up rocks, and rocks make up the earth. And it's actually by our study of minerals and rocks that help us, in part, get to the theory of plate tectonics. So minerals do play an important role, and we're talking about a lot of things dealing with ge uh, geology. Now, there are five characteristics that all minerals must have, and these define a mineral, why it's not the same thing as rocks. So those two samples I have on the front table of the classroom, or in any part of the classroom, you should be able to tell if they're mineral or rock by looking at these five characteristics. <clears throat> so all minerals need to be naturally occurring, solid, inorganic, which means not organic. Organic means from living things. So minerals cannot be formed from living things. Rocks can be. Has to have a crystalline structure. And a crystal is just a geometric shape in which the atoms arrange themselves. We'll talk about more of that later. <clears throat> minerals also need a definite chemical composition, which means that they are made up of the same chemicals each time, whereas rocks can vary. So five characteristics all minerals must have. You need to know these. Now there are many tests we can use to identify minerals. You will not memorize minerals. You will instead need to know how we identify them. Color is easily the easiest test, but it's not dependable. It is not dependable because their impurities can change the color of the mineral. Minerals can be different colors. You see these three samples are all the same mineral, but yet they're different colors. So color can be somewhat useful when we're talking about sulfur. Sulfur is very yellow, and that helps identify it. But a lot of minerals vary in color. Quartz, calcite, two of the main ones, fluorite, those can appear in many different colors. A more useful test is streak. This is the color we get from the powder of a mineral it's on a scratch plate. So this right here is called a scratch plate or streak plate. It's just a little tile here. Then we rub the mineral on it that leaves behind this powder. The color of the powder is the streak test. While the external color can vary for a mineral, the color of the streak never or hardly ever varies so it's you know typically one or two colors makes it very easy to identify luster is another test this is the way that light is reflected so it could have a metallic or shiny luster non-metallic could be like a dull earthy glassy it could look like glass waxy it looks waxy um so we have different uh terms we use for luster but typically just how it reflects light uh, we want you to say shiny or not shiny. We want to say metallic, looks like polished metal, submetallic, dull, earthy, all different names we use to identify it. Uh, pearly, waxy, you can see the sample on the right, to look of oil coated substance. Glassy is also referred to as vitreous, that's a term you should know, and it looks like a piece of glass. Silky looks, having the look of silk, that makes sense. You see these lines here make it look silky. Hardness is a very important test because this is one of the ones that gives you a very good understanding of what type of mineral you're dealing with. Hardness is the resistance to being scratched. Now we do this using the most scale of hardness. It's a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the softest, 10 being the hardest. Uh, a 10 is a diamond. Diamond is the hardest mineral we have. A 1 is talc. Talc is something you can break off by just rubbing it. And we can use various items to figure out the hardness of minerals and we can do this in class. Your fingernail is about a 2.5, so if you scratch it with your fingernail, it has a hardness less than 2.5. So if you can't scratch it, so you can't scratch it, that means its hardness is greater than 2.5. Penny is about three, glass plate is six. So if my mineral scratches a glass, it's greater than six. If my mineral cannot scratch a glass, it's less than six. And the streak plate is a seven, which means that we can't actually do the powder test, the streak test for some minerals that have hardness greater than seven. So as you're doing that in class, pay very close attention when you do the streak test. Is that the powder of the mineral or is that the powder of the ceramic tile? Here's a listing of minerals from 1 through 10. We don't have all these in our classroom. We do not have a diamond in our classroom, at least as a sample. We do have good samples of talc, uh, which is a 1, gypsum is a 2, calcite 3, fluoride 4, apatite 5, feldspar 6, quartz would be a 7, topaz 8, corundum is 9, 
and Diamond in his tent. I will say we do have Corundum in the classroom, along with Topaz, Quartz, Feldspar, Appetite, Fluorite, Calcite, Gypsum, and Talc. We just don't have a Diamond. Now, density is another thing we could figure out about our mineral sample. Uh, density is just mass divided by volume. If you remember from 8th uh, grade physical science, symbol for density is that. Mass is an M, volume is a V, kilograms per cubic centimeters or cubic meters, whatever. Now in the field, we use relative densities to figure out identification of minerals. And that's kind of the heft. Two samples about the same size, if one feels heavier, it's going to have a higher density. Uh, so you could keep various samples with you that you know the density to and could say, well, it's greater than or less than that if you find a sample about the same size. Now, another thing we can deal with is specific gravity, sometimes which is labeled just SG. And that's just the gravity of whatever substance we have, our mineral, divided by the density of water. Now, the density of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter. Uh, it's a different number in the English system. It's like 32.2 or 62.4. We'll look that up later. Or you could look that up, too. Uh, but it's just comparing the density to water. And we know if it's a number less than that of water, it will float. If it's a density greater than water, it will sink. And we actually do have some rock samples that will float. Most of our samples are all going to sink. So specific gravity is a ratio comparing the density of our object to water. Uh, half to just when you compare two similarly sized objects, which one feels heavier, should have the higher density. Now cleavage or fracture is how the mineral breaks apart. Cleavage is if it breaks in a smooth, flat plane or surface. Fracture is a regular breakage. And you see this sample here uh, has well-defined cleavage. You'll see all these kind of lines here. Now actually I can pull that apart and I'll see thin sheets. We have a couple samples in the classroom that are a lot like this. When you get to the lab, you'll see all these little thin sheets of minerals. Uh, fracture is when it breaks irregularly. and So this could be like a curved break or a jagged break. Uh, so cleavage is a flat break, fracture is a irregular break. Uh, now it's due to the instruction, uh, due to the internal structure. Uh, for some reason this word got cut off. It's how the molecules are arranged. Uh, basal, we get levels of smooth sheets. Cubic forms like a cube. So it actually will look like under a microscope. Okay, my cube's going to look better. Like a cube shape. <coughs> Rhombohedral just doesn't have right angles. A fracture, there's different types of irregular breaks. Conchoidal is smooth, concentric, we see in this sample here. Hackley has just jagged points in this sample. Earthy, it will crumble. You know, it's earthy, it's almost like dirt. Uneven, just, well, uneven. Crystal system is another thing that's very important, but it's not very easy to see with the naked eye. So if we take a small sample, look underneath the microscope, oftentimes we figure out the crystal structure. So crystal structure is how the minerals crystallize and so the molecules line up and they can form like a cube and so if, again I'll try drawing a cube um, so there's my cube shape yeah I know it could be better uh, but it is just a small cube and the molecules keep arranging like that and sometimes the crystal will actually form a big cube uh, typically the longer it takes to cool the longer it takes to form the larger the crystals are going to be so we have some samples in the classroom which are very large crystal size, but then we have a lot which have very, very tiny crystals. And those are a little harder to identify. When you do the lab, I'll actually put little pictures of the crystal shapes you need to identify the names of those shapes. And the numbers that uh, are those shapes will be on the back. Cubic, just cube, six even sides. Hexagonal is a six-sided crystal shape. Tetragonal uh, is kind of a cube that's elongated a bit. So we have two sets of equal sides and one that's not. So like the top and bottom are different. Orthombic is three unequal sets, all right angles. So it's like a rectangle, but uh, three unequal sides. Monoclinic is three unequal sides, but you just tilt it a little bit. Triclinic is three unequal sides, but you tilt it two different directions. And the last test is the special test. And this just means that there are some <clears throat> properties that some minerals have that others don't. Like some react to certain acids, so I can use some like hydrochloric acid or hydrofluoric acid or hydrosulfuric acid, and it'll create bubbles. That's a reaction. That can actually help identify it because of its chemical composition. Again, you have to remember that those five characteristics, and one is chemical composition. Some will go under a fluorescent <clears throat> light or UV light. Uh, some have a unique smell. Sulfur 
in particular smells like rotten eggs very potent rotten eggs especially if you heat it up some are magnetic like magnetite figure out that was magnetic uh, and so there are all these special tests one is salty but remember in the lab you don't eat or drink anything you definitely don't lick the minerals uh, but there is a mineral that in nature if you try it if you did actually lick it uh, it would taste salty uh, we do have that sample in the classroom but do not do do anything to it other than look at it so different tests identified there's five characteristics and there's a good set of tests identified we need to know both of these to understand how minerals form why they're used